So today we're going to install the Joan Jip double keypad lever lock set. This is a mechanical lock. It is not, you do not need power or battery to make this lock work. It is all mechanical. And it's also a latch lock. There is no deadbolt option for this. This is a general overview on the page one. And on page two, you'll see a list of the parts. So I'm going to go over those parts real quick because I have them all laid out here. We have two door seals. This also comes with screws that you can mount onto the door. Um, this is something you don't have to use. We recommend highly that you would use some painter tape when installing um, to keep it, the door seal and that together. I'm going to go over that in the installation. Here we have um, two lock latches and this is a two and three quarter inch back set. And this one is a two and three eighths. This is your standard uh, back set latch. You'll probably only need to use one of these latch, latch bolts. Here we have the two screws and plate, strike plate for the, the latch. This is your primary primary uh, lock. It does not have any screw holes on this. This is what um, goes on the outside of the door. What goes on the inside of the door usually is this with the screw holes. This is your secondary keypad. Here we have uh, the lever that goes on. That's the handle, lever handle. Please, please note there is some plastic here. If you're missing that piece or the gold inside, please let us know that that helps keep, keep it stable. Also, we have some sticker um, that describe the clutch feature. There's a specific clutch feature for this lock. We'll, we'll go over that in more detail. Also, we have this little Allen wrench to help secure that on. Here we have three sets of screws and three sets of spindles. You will only need one of these sets. You do, however, need this. This is very important. A lot of people forget that we have these ex the screw extension that screws into the top and bottom of the primary and the latch post, which holds the, the latch in place which is also very important. If you don't have any of these, please let us know. We have a small, a standard, and a large. So uh, for your standard door, you will use the middle set and the extension post and this, this spindle right here. Um, if you need to modify for a larger door, this is for like a two and a one eighth inch door, two inch to two and a one eighth inch door. This is more for a uh, one and three inch, uh, one and three eighth of an inch up to one and a half inch door. So you can see highlighted here. All locks come pre-coated. This one is one, push C first. That is the clear button. You always push that button first and then enter your code. One, three, seven, zero, Z. If I turn it over, you can see on the back side of the lock, the red indicate that that particular number or letter is turned on. If it is blue, you will see those are all turned off. So that will not be part of the code. Only the red will be part of the code. When you push C, the clear button, everything should clear away. Great. This is all the things you need. Please um, stay tuned. We're going to go through putting it onto the door. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the next thing. But we want to install the lock. But first, very important, I have three very important things that you need to check before installing your lock. If you do not, if you miss these three things, you're going to have to backtrack and taking the lock off the door, you're gonna save, you're, you're gonna save yourself a lot of time by doing these three steps. So first thing, what you wanna do is make sure your code is correct, that your keypads are both working uh, and working properly. Also the clutch feature we're gonna talk about, and there's a passage mode, which is uh, very unique to this lock, where you can temporarily disable the code so that you can freely move in and out Say if you have a party or have a gardener coming over, you don't have to press the code every time to open the door. You can just go in and out. And then once they leave, then you can disable the passage mode so that you have to enter the code again. So we're gonna go over those three things very quickly. First things first, we're gonna pick up our primary lock. These keypads come pre-coded. This code is C1370Z. Um, always press C before entering the code. So that is the very first in any code that you do. You can change the code. Um, I will explain how to do that later, but we highly recommend using the pre-coded one. It's a unique code to this lock and nobody knows it. It's uh, random. So, but C is always the first if um, some buttons are pressed that clears those buttons. So that's why C is always very important. So we're going to put in the code now, 170Z. And once I pick up my handle, turn it works. And I'm going to show you again. 
1370Z. When I turn it over, you can see on the back, the red is for the code, the black, the uh, blue is for the uncode. And when I turn the knob, the chamber here chain turns with the handle. Now we're gonna move on to the clutch mode. So the clutch feature here, if if by chance you tried to open the gate and it it forces it's it's forced down like this, this has a clutch feature where it's not going to turn the chamber. It's a safety precaution and also it's a it deterrent for anybody who's trying to br to break in or uh, enter an incorrect pass pass code and they turn turn the the handle. It's not going to engage the chamber. Okay, but. If this happens, the lock is not broken. You just need to return it to horizontal and enter your code C1370Z. And as you can see, if I flip it back over, now the chamber is engaged, turn the, open the door, and uh, it's working properly again. Like same thing if it's forced this way. If somebody, in, if somebody tries to step on it, then you know it will, in, it will disengage, but the lock is not broken. You can just, again, go back and enter your code, okay? The last thing I wanna talk about is the passage mode. So once you press C, and right now it is locked, but if you press C, 1370Z, now what we're gonna do is press Y. What that enables is a passage mode. So now the handle is able to move freely, the chamber is able to move freely because of the Y key, and your gardener or party goers can come and have fun, and you don't have to enter the code every time to get into the door. Now they leave and everything is gone, everything's great. You wanna clean up, you press Y, C, and now it is locked again. It's as simple as that. I'm gonna do it one more time. C1370Z, Y for passage mode. Now it is free. To undo passage mode, simply press Y and C. And now you're back and you can enter the code again to enter the, do enter the door or the gate, okay? Great, now we're gonna move on to installation. Oh, another thing, if um, this, you don't wanna leave this like this, you want to um, screw this tight so that it cannot come off. This is what this little Allen wrench is for, now it cannot come off. And also, um, this little piece, there's a little plastic piece. If this plastic piece or this gold uh, ring inside it gets lost, for, please do not lose it, this helps keep the lock secure, keep the handle secure. If it, it can get wobbly, if nothing is in place there. So please let us know if this is missing or this little ring inside. Um, and, the, and the Allen wrench is very important because it because it helps to open it and to um, tighten this handle so that it stays secure. Okay, now we're gonna move on to installation of the lock. Okay, so now we're gonna install the latch and uh, drill our holes, and we're going to install the keypad. So what we're going to do here, I know this looks confusing, but you want to determine um, how your door swings from the hinge. If it's if the hinge is on the right or the left, if the bolt is on the right or the um, right or the left, and how it strikes the strike plate. So here I have a right side door, and my, my hinge is here. So when the latch hits the strike plate, you want it to, the, the two rounded ends kind of meet together. You want it to meet and enter this way. You don't want it to come this way. You want it to, the two rounded ends to come together. And that's that. I've already installed, um, this is a pre-installed here, but we do want to take a look at the template. So if you do not have any of these holes, um, for, for the spindle and the latch post, you need two screw holes and, um, yes, a bigger hole here. So we have this template. If you cut it in half, we are using for the left hand door. This is the left hand reverse. Once you cut that, you put the one you need outside. I had to put the other one aside. And I'm installing for a standard. This is a, a one and three quarter inch door. This is a standard door. And I'm gonna use the back set. What you wanna do is you wanna line up the latch, the center line, and you wanna fold along the edge. 
and then what you can do is drill the holes. Most doors will have a pre-drilled standard bore hole. So you will not have to drill those things. All you have to do is line this up to the center and then you'll find your hole right there and drill through that way. Another thing I wanna mention, if your drill, you wanna make sure you drill it straight because if you drill at an angle, the, the keypads are gonna be off. One's gonna be higher, one's gonna be lower. When this spindle goes through at an angle, it's gonna cause some binding. It's not gonna be able to turn properly. So you wanna make sure that all things are lined up. And also, you're gonna have, it should be the other way around. You're gonna have your extension post meeting up with this. So you wanna make sure that this hole and this hole are very straight, okay? And now, so we have our latch is in place. The next thing we're going to do, our keypad is checked. We check the code and everything. I highly recommend before trying to install, just to make sure you can always check with the door seal. The door seal will give you a good idea. This hole is correct and correct. These holes here are for if you want to screw this into the door. We don't necessarily recommend, we um, recommend using the blue tape. Painter's tape is very helpful when installing when installing these locks. Just a little piece of painter's tape on each side and that will secure right to your um, seal. So you can move this independent, independently. This is very important, like I said. Do not lose that. So we're gonna go ahead and get a primary keypad and we can go ahead and put this on as well. So just a piece here you don't want to cover because you'll have a hard time getting it off later. So outside is fine, but just like that. Now what we want to do is we flip this over. There are three things that need to go in here. We have screw extension post number one. We have screw extension post number two on the bottom and your latch post, which will co coincide with the hole on the side of the latch that you're trying to install. So my primary lock is gonna go here, my swinging door here. I'm gonna put it on the right side so that this will hold the latch stable when we're trying to, I don't know if you can see that, but we're going to, once our holes are drilled, we're gonna slide this right in there. And you can see that this side is going through that hole and you have those two holes. And again, so next, so we have that in place. One thing I didn't forget is your spindle. So you need that spindle there. And the spring always goes on the primary lock side, primary keypad side. And thread it in just like that, so that the angle, so now you can see that when it turns, it will turn that latch this way, okay? So now we have those four things on the back of the primary lock. The only other two things we need Again, we don't need the handles right this moment. We're gonna take this, and what you want to do is kind of twist your lock, something like that, and bend into place. And if we look through our hole, we can eyeball and see that that, um, that, that post is on the other side. Just thread it through. to make sure if I need to make any adjustments. So now is when I will place my handle. We'll try my code. One second, it's gotten in the way a little bit here. So I'm gonna try my code, 1370Z. Oh, I forgot, very important thing. Press C first, 1370Z. I'm gonna turn the handle. And as you can see, when I turn that handle, that bolt is it the mm, latch is engaged and it moved. Okay. If you'll notice, if I press C one three seven zero Z and I turn it this way, it's not going to engage this. So you have to pull down on the handle to engage. And again, three seven zero Z. 
engage. So now I can tighten this and make sure this stays in place when I work on the other side. So I have that handle is installed. Same thing for this side. I'm going to put on my handle. I'm going to enter my code. I did it again. C1370Z. Zero, zero. And as you can see, as I turn it, it engages again. 1370Z. Zero, zero. That time I did press C, but when I go up, it does not engage. But, okay. So now my lock is working properly. I can adjust this. And now we have a working lock. It's too much, but look what happened here. I have to put that back on, so that will help with the stability. So just be careful when installing. You don't want to miss any parts, lose any parts. There's a lot of working things here. Okay, all done. Remove my tape. There's no residue. It's very clean. And there you have your very own lever lock. Okay, so now you've installed your lock and Everything should be working well. Now what we want to talk about are three different things. So we want to talk about how to change the code, how to um, put no code so that you can use the, the lock without having a code inside. And also we want to talk about disabling um, the Y passage function. So here, again, we have our lock. It's installed on our door. The code is this. It comes pre-coded. Each lock is unique from the factory and you, you can totally use this code we highly recommend because it is unique and, and nobody knows it um and again the c button you have to press that that is part of the code uh and then one three seven zero z is is the code so what we're going to do now is we're going to take take the lock off the door but first i do want to secure this to the door just to make sure um for whatever reason these locks are they're they're pretty heavy so uh if it falls it can damage if you're working on concrete we highly recommend just having one side taped to the door that's where these this uh, painter's tape comes in really handy because it doesn't leave any residue things like that if you have small hands you can't really hold both sides of the lock at the same time so it's very helpful to have that tape the only thing that you need to do i'm going to recommend also to take off the handles just remove those again just to make it very easy to uh, maneuver it's because these can be heavy as well. So remove those first. And then the next step is to unscrew. And so but this one sits better because it does have those posts holding it in. But um, so there's that, set it aside. And now we're gonna talk about how to change the code. So right now, what you wanna do is flip this over. Um, this code, this lock is, uh, it has a pin function. So. In order to change the code, you need, this has little pins that go in. The red is for the coded numbers, so 1370Z will have this, the red, and then also the rest of them will have the blue, the blue code. I don't know if you can see that. Also, let me talk about this shape. So the pin has, um, it has a rounded end, and this is more of a, a flat, rectangle this is around the rounded end goes in like this and also um, it has a bump it has a bump on the outside on, and then on this one has a indentation of a bump so that will be important when we move forward with that so next thing I want to do and again remember this little seal comes off I don't know if you want to just tape that on if that helps keep that there um, 
So we're going to take this off. I'm going to keep pressure on it with my thumb as I remove these screws. They're small little screws. They should come out pretty easily, but there are springs behind it. So you don't want to lose any of those springs. So you want to keep the pressure down and unscrew that other red screw, set it aside, do not lose it. And then, so now I'm going to go ahead and flip this over and gently remove. And as you can see, this is what the backside looks like. If for some reason this spring comes out, so try not to move them, but if it does move, you can, you can, um, you can put it back in. It should kind of sit in there just like that. Um, but if you lose any of these screws or spring, please let us know. That's why this is a little bit tricky. Um, so an another thing that I want to point out is the C button needs to be pressed all times while inserting or removing the code pins. So when you're, when you're changing the code, so I'm going to change the code. I'm going to press the C button. As you can see, the C button on this side, I'm going to press it down. I'm going to hold it down and this will pop up. You must do that if you want to remove the pin. So I'm going to take out this, this number two. I'm going to take out number two. That was a blue. And I'm going to take out number one. Okay, so there was a red. So 1370Z was the, cur the, the code, and I'm going to change it. Um, actually, I'm going to take out the number six as well to show you the different um, notches. So number six was not coded. So now I can change the code by putting the pins back in. I can use the same pin that I just took out. Um, but as you can see, I don't know if you can see, but there are little notches on this side that are pointing up. That corresponds to the bump, the Audi, we'll call it Audi belly button. So that bump goes corresponding to this. On this side, the, the bump is, needs to be pointing down for the code to be correct. If you turn it this way, it will not, it will not, it will not work because that has to be, will not go in. It will not be able to be put in because it'll stop will be stopped by that bump. So what you need to do is change that. We're going to make the code 23670Z. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put this bump down on this side and we're going to make this into instead of a 2, instead of 1 we're going to put 2. So we can just use our fingers, that's fine. And I'm going to use the blue. Each space has to be filled. So don't leave a space. So now we have 23670Z. Typically, you want your code to be about five numbers, four to five numbers. We recommend um, that's, that seems to work out the best as far as being able to have the security and those things. And we want to gently let that sit right in there, and we're going to press it down. Sorry, I'm going to press C again to clear everything that was done. If I press all the buttons, you should be able to see better. Don't need to press Y. We should be able to see our code is 23670Z, so it's a little bit longer. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. So 23670Z. As you noticed, I pressed the C button first. And here, as you can see, the chamber turned, the buttons are now released, so the code works. I'm going to try it again. Two, three, six, seven, zero, Z. And it works. If I put in the wrong code, clutch function, just put it back. Two, three, six, seven, zero, Z. Okay. Now, this code is now one, three, seven, zero, Z, the, the original code. This code is now two, three, six, seven, zero, Z. So if we put this back on the door, this code and this code, you will have to put in different code for each side. So in order to change them both, you need to change both keypads. Now, if I want, 
On the outside of the door, I want the code. On the inside of the door, I do not want the code. I do not want to have to pr um, press in the code every time I want to go outside. You can disable that by having no code at all. There, and again, when I do this, I need to press the C button so that all the numbers come out. So now for no code, again, you can use the passage mode to disable temporarily, and you don't have to change this. But if you want to permanently change it, you can. And here's where we're going to remove all of the red pins. We take out the red. Don't lose those. Can you use your finger? It's a little stuck. Can be a little easier to do that. Okay, so now I've removed all of the red. And now we want to put in our blue. And again, the bump is going to coincide with the notch there. So on the left side, all the notches are pointing down. The bump will go down. On this side, let's see, one more here. Okay, so that side is good. And I do have only one more blue, so that is not a problem. What we're gonna do, we're gonna just leave the number two empty, and then we'll return the plate. So now, as you can see, all the numbers and letters are blue, and I can freely move the chamber without having to put in any code at all. Tricky part about this is if you push any button on this keypad, now it is locked. And in order to unlock, you just press the C button and now it has no code. So this is considered no code mode and you can freely move. And again, this is for maybe the inside of the door. Some Sometimes you just want to freely open the inside Nobody's going to bother it. They can't reach around and unscrew these holes. This is an opportunity where you can turn this off. And again, we didn't put um, any pin in the number two. It just makes it a little, there, you'll feel no resistance because it's just the spring that's pushing down, not the pin. It's not pushing pin into place. So just so you know. So that is no code mode. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is how to disable the Y passage code function. This is a rare case. It might happen where we've had a customers, uh, some parents call and say, I want to disable the Y uh, passage code function because my kids, they turn, they put in the code, they enable the Y key, and then they forget to put it back. They forget to put it back to coded mode. So I'm going to show you how to do that in this video real quick. For, for now, we're going to remove the Y key. Press C, take your tweezer, and remove the Y key. As you can see, this is very specific. This does not have a bump on it. And so it's very hard in, in order for you to put it back in the correct position. You can see what you're going to to know um, the correct orientation here. The best way to find out is to take the neighbor, the upstairs neighbor, as you can see, that rounded side is going into the lock down, and you have the more square side here. This side that looks like a face with a little nose on it, that should line up with this, with that, um, the neighbor, the X. So when this goes back inside, you're going to put it there. Same thing here for this, if you want to enable it again. But right now, we're going to leave it out for now. We're going to put this back on. Okay, so now we removed the Y key, so you do not have the passage mode function. So your kids cannot forget to put the code back because that function is removed. So they cannot enter the code, put the passage mode, and move it freely. So let's test to see if this works. So I have um, two is the only number I have in my code right now. So what I'm going to do is press C to clear everything, push in my code, which is two, and now as I turn the knob, open the door, when I return, 
to horizontal, it's locked. So it did open and return to locked as it would with your normal code. Now let's try the passage mode. When I push C, I put in my code, I push Y button, there is nothing there. When I turn the knob, turn the handle and pull the door, when I return, it's still locked. So you, there's no way to forget to enter the code. You always have to put in the code to open this keypad, okay? If you want to put the Y key back, again, I will just show you again. And I already had my, if you put it in this way, you can see that's going to be, it's going to make it not work. The, the lock will not work. You have to put it in the correct orientation. And then if you need to check it again, you can check it there. I'm going to go ahead and slide it in. Put this on. As you can see, this comes off very nicely. Remember this little plastic piece? That's why I had that on there. Um, if you have any questions, please contact us, john at joanjip.com, and we'll gladly take care of you. Um, thanks so much. Hope this was a helpful video.